Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day is going really well. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about luminosity masking in Topaz Studio 2. Uh, Topaz, I just have to pause and say this, they do an amazing job with their masking. It's, it's really easy to use, really powerful, and really well done in, in their products. And so I'm a huge fan of their masking capability. And I've done previous videos about brush masking, which I'll link up there, as well as gradient masking in Topaz Studio 2. This video will be about luminosity masking. So your first question may be, what's a luminosity mask and why do I need it? Uh, so I guess that would be two questions. Uh, the first one is, what is a luminosity mask? As the name implies, it's a mask that's created based on the luminosity values in a photo. In other words, it's a mask based on brightness values. And so it gives you a lot of control, and this is the why you'd want to use it part. Um, it gives you a lot of control over the image because it would allow you to apply your edits selectively to either the bright or the dark parts of an image. So creating a luminosity mask, which by the way is super quick and easy and really intelligent in Topaz, it allows you to quickly sort of separate the bright and the dark parts of an image and thus apply your edits selectively to either the bright or the dark parts. So let me just show you how it works because it's really powerful and really easy. Here's an image I shot on my recent trip to Wales, just a landscape. And it started life like that. And you can see the filters on the right hand side. I'll reset these in a moment and walk through what I did. But what I wanted to do is, you know, adjust the light a little bit, uh, bump up some contrast and things like that, and then apply some kind of creative edits to the brighter parts of the image. That's where luminosity mask comes in. So that's my final result. Let me walk through, or excuse me, let me reset these filters and then I'll walk through how I did that. Okay, the first thing I did is apply a basic adjustment. And as you can see here, I'm not gonna walk, uh, I'm not gonna drag uh, all these sliders again. I'm just gonna leave them and talk about it. Bumped up the clarity and the shadows, took down highlights, blacks and whites a little bit, gave it a little saturation bump and a little reduction in temperature. And so basic adjustment basically went from there to there. So all I use basic adjustment for is, as the name implies, some very basic adjustments, right? I'm just trying to manage the light a little bit, give it a little bit of, um, kind of reset things uh, because raw files, you know, raw files often look like that where they're lacking in tr contrast and punch. And the basic adjustment filter just allows me to get a, a slight amount of control uh, over the, uh, the start of my image, right? It's not something I would use as a comprehensive filter, but it's a great way to start. Hence the name basic adjustment. Next thing I did was add precision contrast, which is really one of my favorite filters. And I won't detail everything here, but I just kind of went through, made some adjustments in the different contrast levels, adjusted lighting a little bit, and then bumped up color contrast, as you can see in the bottom. And so at this point, if I can close that, I can't seem to get my mouse in the right place. At this point, I was able to go from that original raw file, and this is a raw file I'm editing, to that. And so now I've got it looking contrast-wise and light-wise, how I want it to look, but I want to add some creative edits as you saw in my final photo. So the first thing I want to do is get a color overlay. So I'm going to say add filter and I'm going to get color overlay. And as the name implies, this filter allows you to pick a color and apply it across your entire photo. So it defaults to this white. You just click on that once and you've got this color wheel. So I'm going to use this, which increases As You can see this is the brightness value of the color you're choosing. I'm gonna put it about there, and I'm gonna come over here and grab kind of something in the orange kind of realm, and this allows you to kind of see what you're doing. And I'm not really sure that this is how I would edit the photo, but uh, because the color is very different than the rest of the photo, it allows me to demonstrate luminosity masking very well. So now I've picked this orangey kind of color, but I don't want it all over the whole photo, right? That looks terrible. So here's where luminosity masking comes in. You just come up here on this filter. now. One thing to pause and talk about is that in Topaz Studio, each time you add a filter, that's effectively another layer. So I might say filter or I might say layer. I'm really talking about the same thing, but make sure you're on the filter that you want. And this little um, icon here that looks like kind of the Japanese flag, as you can see, as you hover over it, it says add a mask to this layer. So yes, one click and that's what I wanna do. Now, Topaz will default to having white um, here in your masking window. This is the view of your mask, this little box here. Uh, the key thing to remember with masking is white reveals and black conceals. In other words, white, uh, wherever it is white in the photo, which now in the view window you can see is the entire photo is white, that's where this effect is gonna be revealed or shown. 
Um, the opposite is black, which will conceal it. So when you start to see black um, in this view window, those are the parts of the photo, the black parts, are the ones where it'll be concealed. In other words, you will not see that. And so this is where you want to use a luminosity mask, or I do in this case. So you just click on Luma, and one click, and you can see it automatically creates something. Now, it will create it based on its own best guess, um, which is actually, unfortunately, wrong in this case. This is not what I want to do. If you look at the view window, it's kind of white in the foreground, and basically black in the sky. I don't want that. I want the opposite of that. And so you see you've got this little eyedropper. Here's how it works. You eyedrop into the areas that you want to conceal, right? Um, so if I eyedropped into the sky, it would basically um, conceal the sky and reveal the effect in the landscape. I don't want that. I want to do the opposite. So I'm going to pick a really dark part of the photo, which is this lake, and I'm going to click it there. And as you can see, it just made that adjustment. And you can see in your view window over here that the mask is now pretty much revealed in most of the sky and, and almost completely concealed in the landscape. And that's more what I wanted. So if I turn this filter off, you remember color overlay was orange, sort of an orange uh, overlay, not sort of, it was an orange overlay across the entire photo. Um, now it's just applying to the sky. So I've turned it off. No, none of that filter is showing anywhere. And I turn it on. You can see that it's just applying in the sky. Let me do that one more time. Off. If you look at the sky, that's the original sky. And now I've got that kind of little bit of that orange tint in the sky, which I like. So you can always click on the masking um, icon there on that filter to bring that back up and click on Luma to go back into it. So once again, if I wanted to change that, I could by using the eyedropper but I don't. I want to talk about these sliders down here. So transparency, that uh, to me, let me just show you really. So look at two things. Look at the photo, but also look at this viewing window here for your mask. So transparency is at zero. And as I drag this to the right, you'll see the photo is starting to take on more orange, which means that color overlay is applying across more of the photo. And also my masking window is becoming more white, right? If I go back to the way it was, very black in the bottom of the photo, mostly white on the top. But as I drag transparency, I'm basically going from a zero transparency to a one transparency. One is basically the filter effect of the color overlay is going across the entire photo. In other words, the luminosity mask is being reduced to zero. So it's sort of an opposite. At zero, my luminosity mask is showing just where I want it. And that transparency of one, it's not showing anywhere. So this to me is what I consider an opacity slider for that mask, right? And so uh, you can move this around to adjust things as you want. If you wanted a little bit of that bleeding through, you know, that looks pretty okay as well. You can see how the mask is impacted there. But for visual purposes here, I'm gonna leave transparency at zero. But again, I think of transparency as opacity. That's the best, best explanation I can have. Um, luminosity here. This affects the mask itself. So if you look at this, if you, as I drag this slider to the right, if you look at my view window, you can see that I'm losing, uh, or my luminosity is changing. This is basically the mask itself. I'm going once again from highly luminous and uh, all the way over here to much more uh, dark, right? And so I think it defaulted to something around there when I clicked, um, you know, my, um, uh, my eyedropper into that dark part of the photo. It, well, there, there you go, you can see it defaulted to 14. Um, but maybe I wanna do a little bit less intense. So you can just move this mask, uh, this luminosity slider around to impact the mask. And in fact, I think it looks pretty good like this. So uh, what I did is I used the eyedropper as a starting point. I'll do that again, I'm gonna click the eyedropper. You can see how the mask is different. And then I took the luminosity to the left. And what that's doing, you can see it here, the luminosity mask is being impacted as I change or move this luminosity slider. So one more time, I'll do that eyedropper here in a dark part of the lake. It's defaulting to this 14, and you can see pretty much entirely black on the bottom and fairly uh, bright on the top, which means the orange overlay that I chose with this color overlay filter is being pretty much applied to the luminous or the brighter parts of the image, which is the sky and not at all on the bottom. But as I move this to the left, if you look at that viewing window, you can see some of that orange 
is starting to bleed through. You can tell in the image as well, but you can see that it's um, impacting the mask. I kind of like it, so I'll often use the eyedropper as a starting point and then use this luminosity slider to sort of make adjustments to it. So as you can see in the view window, um, I'm brightening, uh, brightening is the wrong word, um, the white, the reveal component is starting to bleed into more of this landscape, but you know there's still a lot of it that's dark. So I think that looks pretty good because if I isolate it just to the bright parts, it kind of doesn't go together at, with the photo because I've got more orange in the sky, but I've also um, effectively got none in the bottom. And so moving this luminosity slider has allowed me to kind of bleed that into the um, photo itself, as you can tell by the, uh, the mask window. I hope that makes sense. Basically, this is, these are just sliders that you use to sort of massage the look of the photo and customize it. And it's the way I like to describe it in many of my videos is a delicate dance. You're just moving the sliders around until you get them to a point where you think it looks good on your photo. Um, range is basically um, also an adjustment they say that it's basically a, um, a length of, of this adjustment. And so if I go way over here, I'm basically getting almost none. And as I go over here, I'm getting a whole lot of that color adjustment. Again, this is just a way to um, massage the look of the photo. I'm pretty happy with the way it is now, but I just wanted to walk through the luminosity masking. And when you're happy, you can say apply. By the way, if you click here, you can copy, invert, clear, or just delete the mask if you'd like to. I'm gonna say apply. I'm pretty done with that. And let me show you what that luminosity mask with color overlay did to my photo. There's the before, a little bit more of a bluer tint, part of how it was shot, and part of I made a basic adjustment here that kind of added a little uh, reduction in temperature. But this color overlay, I've now applied that color overlay primarily to the luminous parts of the image, and I think it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do one more thing with a luminosity mask, and that is I'm gonna get a focal blur, and I'm gonna get tilt and shift, and basically all I wanna do is blur the clouds. And so again, this is where a luminosity mask will come in. So I'll click on the masking icon, I click on lumen, luma to get the luminosity mask, and I'll click on the really dark part, which means it'll mask it out of the dark areas and into the brighter areas, and it just did that for me. So you can see my mask here. And basically all I did is I added a blur to the brighter parts of the image, which in this image are the clouds. And that's simply because I'm sort of like simulating a longer exposure by doing so. So there's the before. You can see how the clouds have a lot of definition there. And the after, I basically blurred those clouds so it looks like more of a long exposure. And it's just something I like. Personal preference, you may or may not wanna do that, but mostly I just wanted to show you by the way, you can always click on that and click on Luma to go back into it if you wanted to make adjustments. Um, and you know, again here, you can go into Luminosity and make adjustments there uh, to impact how that's gonna look in your photo. You can kind of see how that's um, impacting the mask in the view window. I think it looks kind of good like, not kinda, I think it looks really good like that. I'm gonna hit close. Um, and let me show you a focal blur one more time. There's before and there's after. It's basically blurring the clouds so it looks a little bit more like a long exposure. Um, and it kind of bleeds a little bit into the top of the photo as though it's um, the clouds are kind of you know blurring as they kind of come in across the valley. That's, uh, that's the look I'm going for in this photo. As I said, I don't know that this is exactly what I would finish the photo with. I mostly wanted to talk about luminosity masking. So let me show you the original. There's my original photo unedited. And here's my final. Much more contrast, a little bit of color pop, some warmth. Um, and some blur, and the warmth and the blur primarily applied to the brighter parts of the image using two different luminosity masks on these two different filters. And that's how it works, my friends. Very powerful, very easy to use. Uh, and don't forget those sliders there that allow you to massage it and kind of get the look that you want. I love luminosity masking. It's a, it's a powerful tool that a lot of pros will use, like in Photoshop and things like that. Uh, but using it here in Topaz Studio is super easy and super powerful. Gives you a lot of control over your images. So you could use this for enhancing detail. I could go apply luminosity mask to the shadow areas and bring up some detail here and things like that. Countless ways you can use them on your photos. But that's a hopefully reasonably quick um, overview of how luminosity masking works in Topaz Studio 2. That's it for today, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I will be back soon with more videos. Please like, share, subscribe, and provide any feedback you have in the comments below. And I'll be talking to you soon. Have a great day. Take care and adios.